everyone, let's talk about cookies. No, not the delicious ones that the Girl Scouts are out selling right now, although those are very delicious. I am talking about digital cookies. These are great for convenience, but in the past year, we have seen a big uptick in attacks using these bits of information to bypass two-factor authentication. See, cookies are these little files that are stored by the browser and they can be used for authentication. And that's a common way for websites to handle your login. Normally you, a user, has to type in your username and password. Then the website sees that information and it creates a session cookie to maintain your login state while you browse around that website or you keep your browser open. That website returns an authentication token and a session cookie. That way you don't have to keep on logging into the website every single time you click on a new page. That would be very annoying. Hence, we have cookies. Cookies can store a bunch of information and session cookies specifically store that information as long as the login session requires. Tracking or third-party cookies are also used on all sorts of websites online. And those are the kind of cookies that collect data based on your browsing habits. Those are often used to sell ads against you, like personal ads. There's also a cookie that is stored locally on your computer, but today we are focusing on session cookies. So the question is, how are these cookies hijacked or stolen by an attacker? Usually it happens with malware or open Wi-Fi. So back in August of last year, we saw a lot of news about these kind of attacks happening because of a rise in companies getting breached due to their employees login session cookies being stolen. We have also seen this happen to reputable YouTubers because their session cookies for YouTube were stolen and people were able to log into their studio channels. Now in many of these cases, having two-factor authentication turned on did not fix the problem because these cookies could let an attacker bypass that six digit code. So in one example, Sophos, which is a really big cybersecurity company, they wrote that malware was being used to send copies of session cookies to attackers. As long as that session has not expired, the attacker could have access to the account, just like the user would, from a completely different computer, an attacker-owned computer. Now this malware could be spread through phishing attacks, downloads and email, pirated free download software that's actually malware. Cookies could even be sold and they are sold on criminal forums. Now you would think that session cookies would not last that long, but how often do you have to log into Twitter on your computer? Or how long does it take for your email to log you out and force you to re-authenticate with your username and password? Password. Session cookies can last months, weeks, sometimes as little as days. Banks are pretty good about forcing you to log out after not being active for a series of minutes, but most websites, they don't do that because they want to make their website as convenient as possible for you to use. So cookies and session hijacking are just a few of the many ways that our data can find its way onto the web without our consent. But it's only one part of this much bigger privacy puzzle. If you aren't taking a larger encompassing approach to data security, then a malicious actor could still find information about you in other ways. I am so happy to partner again with Delete Me on this video to share their service, which I have paid for as a customer for many years, and I absolutely love what they do as a company. Delete Me automatically opts you out of data broker sites, which makes it harder for people to find things like your email address, telephone number, home address, and more. And they do it on a recurring basis, since a lot of these data brokers will republish your data over and over and over again. Delete Me helps create a more holistic approach to data security and saves hours of time over sending opt-outs yourself every single month. I have an exclusive coupon code now just for my viewers. You can use the code SNUBS, that's S-N-U-B-S, at checkout for 20% off any of the consumer plans. That's a great deal. That's SNUBS for 20% off and see how Delete Me can help take your online privacy to the next level. You can click the link down below or you can just hit up Join Delete me.com slash morse code spelled just like the title of this channel to sign up today and a huge thank you to delete me for sponsoring this episode so since we're on the topic of privacy again for this video websites can do better even though session cookies do eventually expire there are other precautions that websites can take they can check the ip address to ensure it's the exact same as when you first logged into that session the cookie session can expire sooner but of course some companies don't want to do this 
this because it would make their website less convenient. And websites should be coded so cookies are transmitted over SSL, not plain text, and they should be encrypted. But as users, we have no control over how websites run their businesses. We can also do things to protect ourselves when it comes to cookies. So first, don't use open or public Wi-Fi. Attackers can absolutely use open Wi-Fi to see who else is connected and try to steal your session cookies while they're being transmitted to websites. I have done tutorials on the Hack5 website in the past many years ago showing how software can be used to see packets that are coming and going whenever you're on the same network as an attacker. Choosing to stick with your mobile carrier data and not logging into sensitive websites while you are out and about can definitely help. And if you absolutely must get on public Wi-Fi, listen, I fully understand there are times when you have no choice. Like I just got back from a trip to Utah and I had to check into my flight and the local data there was kind of non-existent. So I had to get on the public Wi-Fi in order to check into my flight 24 hours in advance and I did not like doing it, but I had to get it done. So I realized that yes, sometimes you don't have a choice, but you can do things to protect yourself on public Wi-Fi too. Like you can use a trusted VPN and make sure that you are browsing securely and log out of all of your sessions when you're done. I even just so happened to post a VPN comparison video a couple of months back on this very channel. So you can check that out if you're looking for recommendations. Even on your own private network, like my home network here or your work network, you can also take precautions. You can ensure that websites you are visiting use HTTPS instead of HTTP. I know this has been said for many years, but there's still websites out there that don't encrypt the data. And in Chrome, you can click on the little lock icon next to a website address to see if that connection is secure. You can also see if they are collecting any cookies and you can even get really deep and remove or block cookies on a cookie by cookie basis or a website by website basis. At least in Chrome, you can absolutely do this. Now, if you don't have time to get super nerdy with all the details on every single website that you visit, you can have your cookies be cleared every single time you close your browser and just one and done, one step in, that's all you have to think about. Now to do this in Chrome, you would click the three little dots, go to settings, privacy and security, and then click cookies and other site data. In here, you can choose clear cookies and site data when you close all windows and toggle that switch to on. Now, of course, that means that you will have to re-log into websites every single time you start a new browser session, like if you open up your browser again after closing it. But if you use a password manager, that can speed up the process because password managers can autofill your username and password. Sometimes for better protection, you might not want to autofill your data into a website. You may just want to manually choose to copy and paste it, but for convenience sake, that is one way that you can speed up the process of re-logging into a Accounts. You can also subscribe to this channel for more security tips. If you are finding this video helpful, a subscribe means a lot to me. Subscribing is a very simple way of showing me which videos you find helpful and valuable, and it tells me which direction I should be taking my channel in. Huge shout out to Craig on Buy Me A Coffee and Sigmund, Peter, and Chib SX on Patreon for the support. I appreciate each and every one of you. Now using a holistic approach to security, such as only downloading apps or programs from reputable companies or websites or app stores and never trusting links and emails can better protect you from accidentally downloading malware, which could include cookie theft or credential stealers. Using antivirus, like a very simple one available on Windows now, is called Windows Defender. It's built right in and it's quite decent for most people. And malware detection tools like Malwarebytes, there is a free version, although they constantly harp on you to upgrade. <laughs> That's a wonderful tool as well, and that can definitely help you detect and scan for malware. I constantly say that you should be using good online security hygiene, and if you do this, it becomes a natural part of your daily life and you don't even really have to think about it anymore because the hardest part of security is just setting it up at the beginning and then afterwards most of it is an automated process. If you want more security tips, here's a video about my favorite password managers for the year. I will also put some links down below to some other recommendations that I've done. And here's another video that YouTube thinks that you will enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.